basically a developer um, relations manager for Google, and we are overlooking all of the developer communities. We have four, and I will talk you through them and through um, how you can actually participate and if it's relevant to you, because I do firmly believe it could be fami familiar and relevant to probably almost everyone. Thank you. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of an understanding what developer relations mean, if uh, you haven't been able to get in touch with any people like me. Um, basically, we are an underground team and we are overlooking all the community programs. Uh, we are consisting of engineers, but also community managers. And uh, our main job is to obviously drive these global programs. So they are on a global level. Uh, they exist in any country, almost. Um, and yeah, it's a basically, it's a one to few to many model. So depending on what activities are happening, could be a conference like this one, could be smaller meetups, which you might have attended in the past or will in the future. Uh, but th this is basically what we are doing. And uh, the main job surrounding that is obviously talking to people like you, uh, understanding what their needs are, understanding uh, what they like about certain products and services, and we nurture them and we want to empower them, we want to give uh, them uh, the uh, opportunity to learn new things uh, and uh, give us also feedback about these things, because usually people uh, like you and people that use these technologies on a very frequent basis are sort of kind of influencers and they also give us a good understanding of what potentially needs to change with these products, right? So we also very much rely on your feedback, technically speaking, and not only me, but especially the dedicated product teams, right? So this is also something we accommodate. So how does it work and what is it going on, basically? Because it's a two-way street, as I was kind of hinting at. So we partner up with these communities. It could be also individuals, um, which are called Google uh, Developer Experts. Um, but basically, we give them all the content to hand. We support them when there's stuff like DevFest happening, which usually happens around the end of the year. Uh, but between September and December time, uh, we... Uh, help them with workshops, we help them with speakers. Uh, I'm usually, well, I can be one of them, but also we connect them with relevant experts in the fields that they are interested in. So they are basically hosting meetups, they are hosting workshops, it could be hackathons, it could be anything along those lines. Uh, but also uh, communities are a big part of mentorship. So you could be on any side of that spectrum, you could be a mentee, who wants to develop yourself, and the community is a great resource of people that know things and they want to share it. That's basically the essential part of being in a community. However, uh, it might be also your interest uh, to mentor people because you have uh, learned things along those lines, you have dealt with certain roadblockers and questions, and so you are keen on sharing. So that could be also another thing. The last thing that I want to highlight is obviously communities are essentially also a big network, right? So what people also get out of that is like learning from people in their industries, in their fields, but also getting to know people uh, from other areas, potentially even future areas you would like to work in um, and just expanding your network to a different degree on a global level, on a regional level, on a very small cosmic level, right? So it really depends on what you're interested in. I wanted to give you a little glimpse of why um, our community members really enjoy being part of the community. So I wanted to bring this little video with me. Bonjour. Hola, hola. Привет. Ciao. Salam. Namaste. Hola, que tal? Como estáis? Assalamu alaikum or Bonjour, comment ça va? Yes. Hola. My name is Kate. I'm from GDSC KPI at Kiev, Ukraine. I'm Ruben Aguilera from GDG Madrid in Spain. I'm Guillaume Blaquier, Google Developer Expert on Google Cloud, and I'm living in the south of France. My name is Alina. I'm a GDG Lead uh, and Multimakers Ambassador from Wrocław, Poland. My name is Alessandro and I'm the Lead of Google Network Student Club, University of Warwick, and I'm currently based in the UK. I love the GDG community for the friends and passion. 
the opportunity to grow together while meeting new people is just an amazing opportunity that we all have. Being able to share the knowledge with the global community. It's being connected with professionals all over the world. The biggest thing is the network of friendly, supportive and just awesome people. It's getting to know awesome, like-minded people from all over the world. The best part about being a part of this program is the enthusiasm among all the community members and how it really helped me in upgrading my skill set. Collaborate with like-minded people in order to have an impact. The fact that as a GTG leader we can find and share best practices and it's really helpful, right Marcus? My favorite swag are shirts because you can always wear one every day. Our favorite swag are these glasses. Dash and dash. My favorite swag from the Google events is this mug. I absolutely love this. I got it from the Chrome Dev Summit. My favorite swag, this awesome sweat. And of course, my favorite swag is this. This is my lucky GT sucks. Adios. Cool. So you might have already seen there's a lot of different topics, right? Uh, and you could uh, host a community around any of the Google technologies, right? So um, this is something that people are sometimes not aware of. Oops. Cool. So I'll give you a little bit of a down drill of what our communities are, which areas exist, and then I'll drill further down into the different programs and how it might be relevant to you. Uh, GDG is probably the biggest uh, program we have. It's called Google Developer Groups, and it's essentially communities coming together. Um, they are usually based on a location, so it could be GDG Berlin. In uh, Berlin, we actually have four different, five different ones. We have GDG Berlin, we have GDG Cloud Berlin, we have <laughs> Women Tech Makers Berlin, which I'll talk in a minute about. Um, there's GDECs, so there's a lot of them basically, and uh, it really depends on what you're interested in. GDG can host uh, a variety of uh, topics. It also depends on the organizers, right? Um, they get together, but they also live off their community. So if you're, for instance, interested in some topics and you would like to join them, but they are not hosting anything that would be interesting to you, it's also part of your kind of duty to reach out to them and tell them, hey, this topic could be interesting, I might want to talk about this, or I have maybe a contact from my network that would be super suitable to talk about this. What do you think? Because ultimately, all of these people and all of these community groups are volunteering, right? So they do, um, they do it in their free time, and sometimes it would be super nice and helpful for them to also hear from the crowd, what are you interested in? Um, we are with GDG in more than 135 countries. Um, we have 44 in Germany, just by itself. And uh, yeah, we reach more than 1 million developers per year on average. Um, obviously, the last two years were a little bit of a challenge. Um, a lot of them obviously deferred to being virtual. Um, what have stayed since then is that people tend to host now in person or hybrid events, which I think we are doing today as well. So that's something uh, that they have learned. The biggest thing that's going to happen this year is DevFest. I saw some people nodding already. Um, and yeah, that's something that I'm really excited about because it's the first one in two years that people actually come together again. GDSC is actually the communities for students. So uh, the difference between all of the other communities compared to GDSC is that uh, the leads change every year because obviously not everyone stays at the university forever. This is a good example of um, basically giving more opportunities to, for people to start out because usually students don't have as much experience hosting events yet. So it's the best learning curve to have to start building out your network, to also learn things more uh, on a practical basis because depending on which university you have gone to, they have been more theoretical. So this is for them a very big opportunity to bring in speakers, to do hands-on workshops and learn things as they go. Um, currently, actually, um, we have 14 groups in Germany again. Um, yeah, 
that's basically it. And also the application window is open for the next cohort, but I'll talk about this in a minute. GDEs are basically Google Developer Experts, um, and they are sort of the experts or like influencers of that topic. So they would go to like conferences, they might um, choose also an area where they contribute maybe with podcasts, they might be doing online tutorials. So every GDE is different, they prefer different ways of contributing, might be only mentoring people, um, but they usually tend to also go to conference or meetups and would talk about their certain area. You usually host or you're an expert in one to three areas, depending on how broad your portfolio is and your knowledge base. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's kind of the influencers of the dev ecosystem, I would call them. Uh, we have more than 70 now in Germany. And they range from all the technologies, right? Could be cloud, could be Android, could be web, could be Kotlin, anyways, along those lines. And the last one is women tech makers. Uh, it's women in tech, it's about empowering. Uh, the question I get for this one the most is, is it only for women? Obviously it's not. Uh, you can all be an ally, so depending on if these topics might be also your, your interest or your jam, uh, you are still welcome to join them. You are welcome to also become an ambassador for them. Uh, we do have male ambassadors, um, but uh, it's really up to you because I feel like people think it's really exclusive for women, and it's not, right? It's about breaking down those barriers. So if you really want to support this, um, also mentoring maybe women to become more confident in their field because what we've seen in the past, they never lack the skill set, they only lack the being straightforward, applying proactively for conferences, speaking at them. That's something where maybe you as an ambassador or mentor could help them more, right? So that's a little bit of an overview. I'm uh, diving a little bit more deeper in each one. Who is part of a Google developer group here? Cool. In Berlin? Which ones? Ah, oh, they are very active. Okay, and you? Uh, I think somewhere in the US. Okay, cool. How do you find it? What is like your experience? Not really that much experience. Okay, so probably joined during the COVID times. Okay. Do you want to add something? Yeah, I think in Toulouse they are the GDG. GDG. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely the biggest developer-focused uh, group uh, in the city? Group. Yeah, and okay. also do the DevFest, yeah. which is a... It's, it's pretty big in Toulouse. It is. Yeah. So yeah, as I basically touched base on, it's kind of community groups, it's like meetups, most of them. Uh, what does happen there, right? People come together. It might be also socializing. It doesn't necessarily need to be 100% technical. Uh, another question we get a lot is, is it only about Google technologies? No, right? You can talk about technology. It should be your area where you're interested in. And if you want to invite, I don't know, different cloud um, uh, companies and they talk about each other, what their ups and downs are, that's also a valid point because let's be honest, right? Uh, a lot of people move towards multi-cloud. So what's the point of only talking about one? It's, it's better for you to learn which ones are the upsides of each one, which would be more suitable for what you're working on, for instance. Um, the good thing about this is uh, it can be small scale, large scale, depending on where the location is, depending on how big the community is. Uh, it could be a good ground for you to start speaking if that's something you would be interested in, uh, but also starting to build out your more regional network. Um, as I said, basically, the three main components is connecting people, learning new technologies, and also grow yourself and others, so mentorship, right? Um, and um, why I talk about this is uh, we do have a lot of communities or GDGs across DAC region, across the world, but there's also still some that are lacking, right? For instance, I give you a good example. If you are based, for instance, in Frankfurt, we do have a GDG there, but we don't have a cloud one. Right? So if you would be interested in finding or founding one in an area because there is none currently existing, that is also a, a possibility for every one of you. Right? You don't need to be an expert in order to, to start a group like this because in the end, 
Uh, it lives off the agendas you build, it lives off the community you build. You don't necessarily also need to host everything by yourself. Ideally, you bring in a few more people from your group uh, or your friendship circle that are interested in the same things. You just need to be, 18, be above 18 years old. I think almost everyone here is that. And you need to be passionate about that, right? Event planning is something that you learn on the go. Um, Building out a network is something you will learn along those lines. It's really an easy way to start out if you feel like, hey, I think there is a lack of uh, certain topics in the area I live in. I do believe people would be joining me. Why not starting it out, right? Um, super easy. We all have code of conduct. That's something you need to adhere to. But essentially, you want to create a safe space so people can exchange their thoughts. They can give feedback. You have a valid or... Yeah, comfortable conversation with the people in the community and no one is feeling unsafe. And then it's really just applying. And if you are, for instance, in the DACH region, so Germany, Switzerland and Austria, this application will come to my email. Um, but if you do have any other question in regards to Google developer groups, I would highly recommend going first to the GDG community dev. You can find all the events that are hosted there on a global scale by each group's there. So if there's meetup, obviously a lot of them are on meetup still, but we also have this joint global uh, platform where you can find all the Google developer groups. Probably expert sounds sometimes intimidating, and I have to be honest, you will have to do interviews in order to become an expert, um, because obviously experts have a certain kind of, you know, stamp on them. They are experts of a certain topic and we need to make sure they actually are and just not pretend to be. So what usually experts really have to take care of is two parts. There's two components. One being passionate about contributing. So you have to find your area. And as I said briefly earlier, it could be uh, tutorials. It could be podcasts. It could be only conference talks, whatever it is. But you need to be consistent with them and you need to like go on conferences, you need to publish podcast uh, episodes every now and then. You need to stay consistent, you need to have a reach to people. And uh, another question we get a lot is, do I only have to contribute in English? No, there's people who speak your language and there will be people speaking that language that you might particularly choose that are also developers in that area. You will obviously probably minimize the reach, but if it's still relevant and people need that support in their language, and let's be honest, not everyone is like native speaker, right? So some people will contribute in Spanish, some people will do it in Russian, we have people doing it in, in Polish, actually Polish community is super active as well. So that's also something you can do, and as Mario said, Again, you don't need to only always talk about that area that you are an expert in, right? You're an expert for a reason, which also means you need to understand that competitive landscape and what's going on, the trends, any future kind of steps towards that. <clears throat> but yeah, basically we do have um, two interviews about your community contributions, which are usually uh, done by community members, so they are not Googlers, but then uh, also, your area of expertise will be tested by the product team that works on that particular field. Um, don't get uh, intimidated. I say interviews, but actually it should be a conversation, right? So, and it usually feels that way, at least from the feedback that I have heard in the past. Um, if that's your interest, feel free to reach out. There's actually very many categories, and we are trying to expand them as products and services become more senior and they, they get a lot of different areas. Um, here's just a, a nice overview of a few uh, GDEs we have here in Germany. Um, but uh, if you want to learn more about this, it's developers.google.com slash experts, right? Again, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to the experts directly because they will give you a very straightforward answer like Mario. Uh, but also you are more than welcome to always reach out to me going to be very brief on the students' clubs because uh, most of you have left your university, but that doesn't mean you can't recommend it to uh, your uh, past uh, university. Uh, but as I mentioned, it's really about starting out as a developer, building out your connections, uh, learning about event uh, 
handling, uh, but also getting hands-on experience on the technologies you read about usually, right? Um, we are opening up uh, the applications for the next year, and it's closing actually in next week, so 5th of July. If you do happen to have connections to interested students that that might be of interest for, feel free to reach out to them, sending them the website, or come to me and I can share some uh, specific material if you want to share it in your wider team. Basically, people just need to have one year left before graduating, and a lot of people even stay on because you might move from bachelor to a master's degree or even to PhD. We have people from all of these areas being a GDSC lead. Um, yeah, but again, basically all of our websites go to developers.google.com and then community, and we have sub-websites for each of the communities. Last but not least, and I want to leave some uh, few minutes for questions, is women tech makers. Um, we have more than, uh, we are actually in 190 countries there. Um, I'm the European lead for the women tech makers program. And uh, it has annual kind of events like the International Women's Day that is on the 8th of March. So we usually have a whole season similar to the Deaf Fest season in March and April. Um, and then there's also now starting a new program, it's called Ambassador uh, Program or Academy, where we are trying to give them all the different uh, pillars of expertise to hand. So it will be technical stuff, it will be soft skills, but also event management, community management kind of things. Everyone can become a woman tech maker. Again, it's really about your contribution and consistency and being in touch with your community. Um, and we are opening up the application window for that again on the 1st of August. Um, one thing I want to really highlight here is you can actually be part of more than one program. So giving you as an example, Mario, who has spoken about the Google Developer Experts program, is also a lead of a GDG in Munich cloud. Um, and you can also, for instance, be a woman tech makers on top of that. They don't need to be necessarily split and they're not cannibalizing each other. They usually work well together. It's really up to you to decide how much of an effort and time you want to put into your voluntary um, commitments, right? Because they do have certain commitments or conditions like being active um, at least um, once uh, in 90 days. So that's really a thing. And if you, it really depends on how much time and effort and mentorship you want to put into that. And I have one last thing, uh, because obviously we are here for Kubernetes, but I, uh, and that means uh, probably a lot of you work with cloud-specific topics. So I'm working on a new project, and uh, I would like to showcase more of individual voices and stories uh, pe from people or cloud developers, and it could be any topic in the cloud universe, right? So if you would be interested in doing a case study, um, and I tell you why it would be cool, because in the end, you're sharing maybe your biggest accomplishment, maybe the biggest solution you have found for a certain problem where you were not being supported through, I don't know, online forum to like find the solution, but you have worked it out yourself, or you implemented something from scratch for your company. It really is the focus about you, your experience, and want, what you want to share with the fellow um, yeah, developers. Uh, if you are interested in partaking, because that means we would have a blog post and we have a video of you talking about your experience. It's really for you, from you for people that are cloud developers. So there's not marketing -y stuff involved that much. It's really about sharing your story. Uh, if you're interested, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you for having me. And again, if you do have questions that come up later, uh, feel free to reach out. No hesitation there. Thank you. Thank you, buddy.